Mr. President, <clears throat> uh, we are still in the process of trying to resolve the nuclear waste bill. As the chair is aware, last night we laid down a substitute amendment, uh, and that has been circulated in the body. We have uh, some amendments uh, pending, and I will identify those at a later time. A uh, very short list. Some may be deemed by the chair a non germane. But I think we can begin the process now of addressing this legislation in a positive vein inasmuch as it would provide a workable methodology for the federal program to ensure that our nuclear waste is managed safely and efficiently. My, my point in highlighting this is to identify the value of this legislation as it stands with the substitution filed last night. Uh, I went through an extended statement yesterday indicating that nuclear energy produces 20 percent of our electricity today. And we simply cannot jeopardize our economic future by ignoring the contribution that the nuclear industry makes to our nation and the realization that the industry is choking on its waste. And the idea of losing 103 nuclear power plants over a period of time because of the federal government's failure to honor the sanctity of a contractual commitment to take that waste in 19 98, even though the ratepayers had contributed some $15 billion to the federal government to ensure the federal government would have the funds to take and dispose of the waste. Well, we're all aware of the realities associated with the inability of the government to do that, fulfill that contract, honor the sanctity of that contractual commitment. But what isn't generally known or understood is the extent of liability associated with the failure of the government to perform its contractual obligation. I've indicated that it's full employment for some lawyers. The liability is somewhere between 40 and 80 billion dollars for failure for performance. So I think we agree that we have an obligation come together and solve this problem on behalf of the American taxpayer, where each family is subjected to an allocation cost of about $1,400 per family in this country each year that we delay this process. Now, we've made substantial progress in addressing these issues in working with my friends from Utah, and I'm sensitive to their particular position, as well as the minority. The ranking member from New Mexico, who I have the greatest respect for. As a consequence, I believe this bill provides significant benefits to the consumers who've paid that 15 plus billion for this federal disposal program and the program direction that we have in this legislation to the Energy Department, which must carry out this important environmental obligation. Now, the Senate should pass this legislation, Mr. President. The administration should support this approach to solving this critical national issue. Senate Bill 1287 provides important changes to existing law as embodied in my new substitute that allows the Department of Energy to meet its 1998 obligation to manage used nuclear fuel from nuclear power plants, which have already begun to run out of space in specially designed storage pools. Further, it allows for settlement of litigation. Begins the process of settlement for litigation between these utilities and the Energy Department in a fair way and eliminates costly litigation against the federal government, hence the taxpayer. 
This bill would protect the use of billions of dollars in the Nuclear Waste Fund so that it is used only for the repository program and not diverted to cover the cost of long-term storage at these plants in some 40 states. The fund itself could be used, however, to purchase containers to house the fuel if those containers were used also to ship the fuel to a repository. I'm not suggesting that's the case, but that's possible. Senate Bill 1287 retains retains the EPA, and I want to emphasize this, it retains the EPA as the sole authority to establish radiation protection standards at Yucca Mountain, establishes a method for EPA to discuss the standards with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the National Academy of Science. But it preserves, in spite of what the Washington Post reported from the administration, it preserves the EPA's sole authority to establish standards. Finally, this bill protects consumers from unreasonable increases in federal nuclear waste fund fees. It allows only Congress to increase those fees, not the Secretary of Energy. So every member of the Senate is going to have an opportunity to express his or her opinion if the fees are raised. It's not going to be an arbitrary decision from the Department of Energy. These provisions, Mr. President, represent just a couple of areas in which, by working together, we can craft a bill that provides the necessary leadership to finally move this program towards achieving the intent of the original Nuclear Waste Policy Act. Well, I would urge that my colleagues support this meaningful reform and begin the responsibility of managing the nuclear waste from the 40 states at one location, not 40 locations. Now, briefly, the benefits of S-1287. I'm pleased to say I've just learned that uh, Senator Kerry of Nebraska has come on as an original co-sponsor of the legislation. Early receipt of used fuel at site in the year 2007 no later than 18 months after authorization of construction by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is in the amendment. There's protection that the Nuclear Waste Fund, Section 105E, source of funds states that, quote, the Secretary may not make expenditures from the Nuclear Waste Fund for any costs that may be incurred by the Secretary pursuant to a settlement agreement or a backup storage contract under this Act, except, one, the cost of acquiring and loading spent nuclear fuel cask, two, the cost of transporting spent nuclear fuel and the contracts holders site to the repository in, and other costs required, required to perform settlement agreements or backup storage. Further, it prevents unreasonable increases in fees in Section 104 of the Nuclear Waste Fee statement, and I quote, the adjusted fee proposed by the Secretary shall be effective upon enactment of a joint resolution or other provisions of law specifically approved and approving the adjusted fee. And it provides for development of a protective radiation standard, giving absolute authority for setting of the standard to the Environmental Protection Agency. And I want to repeat that. It provides for the protection, development, of a protective radiation standard by giving the absolute authority for setting a standard to the Environmental Protection Agency, which, and while acknowledging for the ability of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to provide consultation comments to Congress, as well as the hopeful contribution by, by the National Academy of Science, so that we can get the very best science in on this. But the decision is still the EPA's. Specifically, the amendment drops the interim storage, requires Congress to approve any increases in fees to protect the consumer, three sets schedules for development of repository, four authorizes backup storage at the repository for any spent fuel that utilizes, or excuse me, that utilities cannot store on site, and allows the Environmental Protection Agency to set radiation standards after June 1, 2001. Prior to that, consultation is only with the NAS and the NRC to ensure 
we have the best science and the standard is set, but it's EPA's responsibility under statute to set the standard. We want it on the best science based available. Further, it authorizes settlement agreements for outstanding litigation and requires the election to settle within 180 days as requested by the administration. The idea is to start the settlement process within six months. And it sets acceptance schedules for spent fuel and transfers 76,000 acres of land to Nevada. 76,000 acres of land to Nevada. These are Nevada counties to assist them with the impact of the repository in the counties. It uses the WIP model for transportation, which is currently used in New Mexico, consistent with existing law under the HAZMAT that the state, I want to emphasize this, Mr. President, the state will be selecting the routes so that we can move this waste from the 40 states where it located to one, one site at Yucca Mountain. And we include training provisions to ensure the safety and movement of that waste. There was a question of transmutation, and the minority felt very strongly that we should not be subsidizing international research for the development of transmutation. And we struck that from our original version. Decommissioning of a pilot program for sodium cool fast breeder reactor in Arkansas. We've included study on a Prairie Island rate impact as well. But there's a couple of points that I want to emphasize uh, specifically, Mr. President. And that is <clears throat> for members of this body and their staffs from Delaware, West Virginia, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Hawaii, and my state of Alaska. The significance of that list, <clears throat> Mr. President, is that there are no commercial waste sites in those states. But we have a chart here, Mr. President, that shows where they are. Now, they're in 40 other states, but they're not in Delaware, West Virginia, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Hawaii, or Alaska. So if you're paying attention to this debate, you should be interested in the disposition of the waste that may be in your state, one of the 40 states. Now, we have on this map clearly identified the various states where we've got commercial reactors, we've got shut down reactors, we've got spent nuclear fuel storage, we've got research reactor, naval reactor fuel, so forth and so on. Several years ago when we started on this legislative train to try and resolve this problem, there was a suggestion made and legislation was developed that said, well, since Yucca Mountain isn't ready, it's not licensed. And we've got some of these storage plants that are in a critical stage. The volume of waste has either exceeded or is about to exceed the licensed storage in those plants. So those states can shut those plants down. What are you going to do to make up for the loss of that electric generation? Well. That was left to a later day. The idea then was to <clears throat> move some of the waste from some of the critical areas, some of the critical reactors where the storage had been filled, to a temporary repository at Yucca Mountain. Put it in cast, put it on the surface until Yucca Mountain was certified, licensed, and finalized. There are a lot of steps you have to go through. Well, there was a great concern over that because from the standpoint of Nevada, they felt it had a finality associated with it. In other words, it would imply you got it out there, you'll never move it again. And they opposed that, and the administration opposed it. 
because they simply said we haven't finalized Yucca Mountain, we haven't licensed it, and there's always a chance that we won't be able to do it. Of course, that kind of evades reality because you're still going to have to put it somewhere. Well, let me share with you the letter from the governors, which I think pretty well personifies where we are in this debate. The governors <clears throat> of the various states in the Northeast Corridor, for the most part, Governor Dean, Democrat of Vermont, Governor King, Independent of Maine, Governor Shan, Democrat from New Hampshire, Jesse Ventura, Reform Party, Minnesota, Tom Vilsick, Democrat of Iowa, Governor Jeb Bush of Florida, Howard Dean, Democrat of Vermont, sent a letter to the President. And uh, I highlighted this the other day, but I think it is appropriate because we've come full circle on the issue, Mr. President. The letter reads as follows. We governors from states hosting commercial nuclear power plants and from affected states express our opposition to the plan proposed by the Ener Energy Secretary Richardson in his February 1999 testimony before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Secretary Richardson proposes that the Department of Energy take title, take title, assume management responsibilities, and pay costs at nuclear power plant sites for used nuclear fuel that it, the Department of Energy, was legally and contractually obliged to begin removing in January of 1998. This proposed plan would create semi-permanent, federally controlled, used nuclear fuel facilities in each of our states. Now think about that. We're not going to allow a temporary repository out at Yucca Mountain until we get a final decision. That legislation was defeated. So <clears throat> the secretary and perhaps others suggested they take title of the fuel. But by taking title of the fuel, that just does that. It takes title in each of 40 states. It provides no guarantee as to when or if it's going to be moved. And as a consequence, 40 states have no assurance that it's going to leave their state. So every member of this body representing the 40 states that have nuclear power should be very, very concerned about the implications of this. Now, this came up in discussion. I'd had several conversations. And in deference to the Secretary of, of, of Energy, my good friend Secretary Richardson, he assured me that he would be able to adequately address the concerns of the governors. And I think he made a good faith effort. But obviously it wasn't enough. And perhaps the reason it wasn't enough, and this is certainly not the fault of the secretary, was the inability of the government to commit to its word to take the waste in 1998. That wasn't under his watch. But the government just simply couldn't do it couldn't resolve it, so it wasn't done. But I want to stress the significance of what this basically means to these states that have expressed their concern. They're fearful that taking title in their state would create semi-permanent, federally controlled, used nuclear fuel facilities in each of the states. And they go on a little bit more with some food for thought that I think is appropriate. They say the plan proposes to use our electric consumer monies, which were paid to the federal government for creating a final disposal repository for used nuclear fuel. Such fuels, in their opinion, excuse me, such funds, in their opinion, cannot legally be used for any other purpose than a federal repository. But they don't have that in mind, a federal repository in their state. The plan abridges states' rights. It constitutes federal takings and establishes new nuclear waste facilities outside of state authority and control. These new federal 
nuclear waste facilities would be, in their opinion, as a consequence of where the plants are now. Many of them are near seashores, riverfronts because of cooling lakes. And they would never have been chosen for permanent disposal of used nuclear fuel in a site selection process, but they could very well be if the government takes title adjacent to the plants. Further, the plan constitutes a major federal action which has not gone through the NEPA process, the National Environmental Policy Act. It's kind of interesting because the government agencies kind of conveniently <coughs> go around some of the regulations that others can't get around. The new waste facilities would likely become de facto permanent disposal sites. Listen to that, permanent disposal sites. That could happen in any of your 40 states. Federal action over the last 50 years has not been able to solve the political problems associated with developing disposal for used nuclear fuel. Establishing these federal sites will remove the political motivation to complete a final disposal site. It will remove, if you will, the political motivation. Pretty strong words. Last page, we urge you to retract. Secretary Richardson's proposed plan and instead support establishing a centralized interim storage in an appropriate site. This concept has strong bipartisan support and results in the environmentally preferable least cost solution to the used nuclear fuel dilemma. So there you have it, Mr. President. There you have it. I think that the governors and the inability of the administration to provide the governors with the degree of comfort they need to ensure them that it will not become permanent and that we in this legislation in its final form have changed the take title provision and eliminated that in view of the reality associated with the inability to provide the states with the assurance that the waste would be removed from those states. I had hoped the administration would be successful, that the Secretary of Energy would be successful in aligning the fears. But again, I would relate, probably the reason they haven't been able to is because there's no assurance that they could move any further than we did in 1998 when we couldn't take a contractually related commitment and take the waste at that time. A couple of other points that I want to make that uh, I think represent good faith in the manner in which we've tried to resolve the concerns of the minority included what we refer to as a 180-day window when contract holders must decide whether or not to enter into a settlement negotiation with the Secretary. That's back in the bill at the request of the minority. Uh, we think it's appropriate that a process be started. Uh, I think it's fair to say it characterized that both Senator Bingham and Secretary Richardson felt that uh, this must be an inclusion, an appropriate inclusion of this provision to allow the Department of Energy its planning process to go ahead. I want to touch briefly on transportation. I know there's been a good deal of, of concern. I don't know whether we have the transportation chart, but uh, you know, people say well, we don't want the stuff to go through our state, and that's understandable. So what we have done in accordance with the minority is to use the WIP transportation model, and that's one I think that I can say Senator Bingham and Senator Richardson uh, Secretary Richardson supported. And basically, it comes down to the point where the state can designate the routes to move the waste. And we have also included in existing law a training provision to make the transportation as safe as possible. Now, there was a question of transmutation. I think I've addressed that. But one other point that I'd like to make to my colleagues from Nevada and that is how we've attempted to accommodate uh, 
a concern that they had that was in the bill. Now, first of all, if, if I could uh, have the attention of my two colleagues from Nevada, because I think this is important. Uh, in the original bill, we had payments to local communities. Uh, I was sensitive to the impact that the ultimate disposition of perhaps finalizing a permanent uh, repository in the state of Nevada, and as a consequence, their annual payments of two and a half million dollars a year, uh, I think they would, would go for about five years, it would be about twelve and a half million dollars to the local counties. Then there was another five million to come in on the, on the, uh, the first fuel receipt uh, that would come in. And then annual payments after the first receipt until closure. Well, we don't know when the closure is, but it would be about five million a year. And uh, I think they figured the repository would go until about the year 2042. Now, that's about 140 million to your counties. Uh, at the insistence of the minority, that funding was eliminated. However, I felt very strongly that the land conveyances that were requested, 76,000 acres, that's how big, uh, that's, uh, well, it's twice the size of the District of Columbia, if I can put it in a perspective. So we have in this bill 76,000 acres for Nevada, 46,000 acres to Nye County, uh, 30,000 to Lincoln County. And this is going to go for a variety of uses. The city of Caletti, Calenti, through municipal landfill, community growth, community recreation, Lincoln County, uh, community growth, uh, the communities of Pinochi, pardon my pronunciation, Panaka, Rachel, Alamo, uh, Beatty, Ion, Manhattan, Round Mountain, Smoky Valley, Tonopah, another 28,230 acres, towns of Amorosco, Piamp, uh, another 14,000. These are, these are areas that have been identified for uh, ask, but the senator, uh, disposal by the BLM, surely, uh, if I don't. The one thing we're going to have to do is get you out to Nevada to give you a little lesson in how to pronounce some of those I, I would be happy to do that. kind of reminds me of a story, if I could tell my friend. Uh, we, in the early, in the 40s and early 50s, we had great football teams at the University of Nevada. Uh, and they always, they would bring these football players from around the country as was done in those days. And Marion Motley was a, you know, the great uh, all pro football player, Hall of Fame football player came and uh, signed up for school. And they asked him when he was going through registration where he was from and he said, Eli Nevada, what well, was Eli Nevada? And that's kind of how you pronounce those names, Beatty and Pioch and Perump. And you know, we'll have to give you some lessons on how to pronounce Nevada names. Just like if I went to Alaska, it would be hard for me to pronounce a lot of those names. I, I do apologize to my friend, and I, I know many people come to Alaska and visit Valdez and think it's Valdez. But uh, uh, I, I did want to highlight the fact that we have tried to respond to the request for the land conveyances, and there's 76 thousand acres transferred over to the two counties that would benefit uh, the communities and uh, that's that's in this bill and uh, I, I offer it simply as a, an effort of good faith to be sensitive to uh, concerns that I think are very legitimate and that's the the transfer of land from federal agencies that don't don't uh, have uh, a need for that land to the community so they can put on the tax rolls and uh, have it functionally contribute to the economy of the area and benefit uh, the people. And uh, I think that's appropriate as well. Uh, I see several members, uh, or at least a few members here, waiting recognition. And uh, it would be appropriate that uh, uh, I yield the floor. And at a, at a later time, it would be my uh, r uh, position to uh, address some of the amendments that are pending and uh, 
We want to lay down on it. I yield the floor.